This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. Here are some things we saw in the week's press. Military attacks and violence in the Gaza Strip and Israel have resulted at this point in about 20 deaths, most of them Palestinians. The immediate spark for this round of violence was Israel's killing of Hamas military leader Ahmad al-Jabari on November 14th. But although CNN's Fred Pleitgen claimed that it's almost obsolete to try to lay blame on anyone, the fact is corporate media do lay blame, with timelines that almost invariably stress that Israel is responding to violent attacks by Palestinians. It was no surprise that the first sentence of the front page New York Times article November 14th states that the Israeli assault came, quote, after persistent Palestinian rocket fire, close quote. On NPR's All Things Considered, Audie Cornish explained that, quote, the strikes were in retaliation for the launching of more than 100 rockets at Israel in recent days, close quote. A timeline on the website Electronic Intifada points out events that corporate press mostly ignore. Israeli forces killed an unarmed man in Gaza on November 4th and a 13-year-old boy on November 8th. Gaza militants injured four Israeli soldiers in an attack November 10th, and Israel's three-day response killed five civilians, three of them children. That was when most of those rocket attacks in Gaza occurred. A tentative truce seemed to be in place as of the 13th. The next day, Israel killed Ahmad al-Jabari. There might be a number of ways to present that information, but sadly there's little mystery about how the U.S. press will do it. If you follow Washington politics, you know the country is about to head off a very scary-sounding fiscal cliff. That's the name for an array of tax increases and spending cuts that are happening right on schedule in the beginning of the new year. It's been turned into a dramatic metaphor about the country falling into a certain recession if the scheduled changes go through. Dramatic and completely misleading. As various journalists and economists have pointed out, the cliff is really a terrible metaphor. You can't change direction after you go over a cliff. But tax and spending decisions don't work that way. The government can actually go past the cliff and strike a deal early next year. As economist and New York Times columnist Paul Krugman pointed out, nothing very bad will happen to the economy if agreement isn't reached until a few weeks or even a few months into 2013. But that's just boring reality. Here's the graph that takes up much of the front page of the November 14th edition of USA Today. It's subtle, right? The story that accompanies the frightening image doesn't do much to calm fears, which some would say is precisely the point. Reporters should be asking who benefits from creating this climate of crisis rather than fanning the flames. And pundits are lining up to give Obama advice for his second term. Some of them want him to correct some mistakes from the first term. Meet the Press host David Gregory shared his curious take on November 11th. Jim, I always thought that one of the big mistakes of the first Obama term is that he never had a moment in the Rose Garden where he was flanked by the biggest business leaders in America and said, look, we're going to work together in common cause to deal with this economy, to deal with our fiscal position and ultimately affect America's influence in the rest of the world. Can he have that moment now? Gregory's assertion mimics what various right-wing pundits have long been saying, that corporate America has been under assault in the Obama administration. The idea that Obama doesn't embrace CEOs is odd. He picked GE CEO Jeffrey Immelt to head up a jobs task force. He tapped friends like uh, Wall Street's Tim Geithner to serve in his cabinet. But sure, maybe Obama should have stood somewhere with some CEOs to talk about the economy. Well, it turns out he did that too. Here's a picture of a White House event eight days after Obama's inauguration. The men standing with him are the CEOs of Honeywell and IBM. They were there to support the stimulus bill. It doesn't matter whether David Gregory believes the right-wing contention that Obama hasn't been friendly enough to corporate America or just knows that his job requires him to play along. From viewers' perspective, it looks just the same. I'm Janine Jackson. This is FAIR TV.